Hello there, welcome to my channel. You know, about a week or so ago, I concluded my review series of the books Note Air 5C. And this is the device I've actually been using as my daily driver ever since. In those videos, there were a number of comments of people asking uh, to take a further and closer look at the device and really kind of seeing how it performs with various refresh modes and various apps. So that's really the point of this video. This is in response to the viewer requests asking for things like uh, how it does videos, say for example with YouTube, how it works with say a Bluetooth keyboard and a mouse and Microsoft Word, how it works in an app like Kobo or Kindle. We're gonna cover all of that in this video. So let's just go ahead and dive on in and we'll see how this device performs in those various settings. So we're gonna start off here by demoing page turns and we'll just use the Kobo app to do that. So I'll go ahead and launch the app. Here we go. And we'll just go ahead and go into this book. I should point out that in all the demonstrations, we will be using front lighting as we load the book. And the front lighting will be basically set to about 24 in brightness and just about eight points along the temperature scale. And I'm just putting on front lighting for two reasons. One is it helps uh, with the studio lighting. So this is uh, the best way to view the screen. And then the second thing is it does make colors pop as we go through other demonstrations. So those are the two advantages of that. So let's go ahead and go in. Now we're in Kobo, we're in a book. And let's take a look at the Inkwise Center. So we are currently on a regal mode. So this is gonna give you, you know, a nice images. Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and take a look at book covers as a result. Here we go, we can scroll. And you notice how there's a little bit of that, that flash, right? That's part of what the regal mode does. So it allows you to move, you see a little bit of ghosting there, and then the flash gets rid of the ghosting. You do see nicer uh, images as a result of this particular mode. If I go ahead and go into uh, the other mode, which is kind of a speed mode, you get a smoother scrolling there's no refreshing of the screen, and some of the images aren't as good um, as you would have in the regal mode, but they're still pretty good. You know, book covers are one of those areas that does look nice on a Kaleido 3 screen, and that's the case here, regardless of what mode you choose. If we go ahead and go back into the book, like so, and here we are. So we, again, we're in the speed mode. And what you'll notice is that the page will turn almost immediately. So maybe, maybe I don't know, half a second, perhaps, of changing pages, very smooth, and you don't see a lot of ghosting. And it's pretty traditional not to see much ghosting in a reading situation like this, particularly when you're going page to page. Um, so even though this is not a high definition or regal setting, <clears throat> ghosting really isn't much of an issue and performance is really good. If I went ahead and went back into Inkwise and went to a Regal one, which again is supposed to be better for the visuals, um, it's slightly slower, you'll notice, in going between pages, but still pretty good. And you do see just a little bit of ghosting, but it's very, very faint, um, and it's easy to kind of ignore, um, but it is there. I prefer, and you see there's a flash, so there's obviously a mode to allow flashes at certain points. If we go back to speed, you go into speed mode, you get rid of the flashes, you still get really good performance, um, and you get very little ghosting. So reading on this device is excellent because of the performance and just the low level of ghosting um, that you have with the speed mode. It just works really well here. Okay, so next up we're gonna go into comics, and we're gonna go ahead and use the Kindle app. The Kindle app is one of those apps where you can go cell by cell, and I think it's a really nice use of comics on this device. So we'll go ahead and click on that, and we'll load in, and we're already here in the comic book. And let's just start off by taking a look at where we are in the refresh setting. So we're on speed currently, okay? So what we're gonna notice is we're gonna notice nice smooth transitions as we go from cell to cell, but we're gonna notice some ghosting as well. Black bars in particular really highlight ghosting, but you'll see a little bit of ghosting in the image. Let's go ahead and take a look at that as we go through. 
Okay, so you can see some ghosting here. I see a big kind of black blob there, a lighter color around the edges, a little bit of ghosting up here. I don't see a lot of ghosting in the image, but if I looked really hard, I'm sure I could find it. I'll just go ahead and go through a few cells here. Again, really nice performance. White bars are really good at hiding ghosting. So when you go to white, and unfortunately you can't control it, that's the book itself. Um, but when you go into white, um, it's much better than with black. You still get a little faint ghosting, but it's not as bad. Now there is ghosting here in the image. I don't know if you can make it out, but imagine this little kind of triangle space here. You can see a little bit of the ghost of the conversation bubble from the previous slide. And, Go, so keep your eye on this. And I'm going to go ahead and refresh the screen. You'll see what I mean. Yeah, see, now, now it's gone. So you do get a little bit of ghosting in this mode. Um, but again, it's subtle. You kind of have to look for it a little bit, although you see a little bit more ghosting there in the side of the robot's head. Let me refresh that so you can see it. See, it becomes much more solid. So you do get a little bit of ghosting. Um, I think it's acceptable. I've certainly enjoyed reading comics in this mode. Let's go to the other mode just to show that as a contrast. So we were in speed mode. Let's go into Regal. Now Regal is supposed to make the images better, but it's gonna introduce some flashing as a result. So let's go ahead and, and you can see that it's also kind of flashing as it's going between cells. It's not nearly as smooth. And we still have a lot of ghosting here as well. This image is just full of ghosting. Uh, take a look, particularly right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and refresh the screen and you'll see what I mean. See, all that ghosting now has gone away. So actually regal mode, I, I don't really like that in this mode. I prefer just going back. Let's go ahead and go back into speed mode because you get that smoothness from going cell by cell. You still get a little bit of ghosting that's, that's there, but it's subtle and my personal experience is it's more than acceptable. And I always put my swipe gesture to refresh the screen if I really want that ghosting to go away, if I find that it's bothering me. But that is basically um, how cell-by-cell -cell comics perform on this device. Okay, our next stop is looking at a web browser. The native browser on this device is Neo Browser, and you can see that right there. But of course, you can also download your own browser. You can download Chrome, you can download whatever that you can find on the Google Play Store. But let's go ahead and just go in here into the Neo browser, get that to launch, and we'll go ahead and just go to ESPN, which we've gone to before. Here we go. And this is a really interesting um, example of the impact of the different refresh modes. So let's go ahead and swipe down and take a look at what mode we're currently on. And we're currently on a speed mode. So what that's gonna allow us to do is you're gonna see a really smooth performance, but it will introduce some ghosting as a result. Although this is the mode where you have the book super refresh mode, or I can't remember if that's the exact phrase, but it's the mode where ghosting happens and it just kind of disappears. So it's actually pretty slick um, in terms of handling ghosting as a result of this mode. But what you notice though, is the images aren't that great. Take a look at this image. You see you know, that limitation of both the pixel density, but in more, um, more particular is the lack of uh, the number of colors. Kaleido 3 limited to 4,000 or so colors. And I think this image really highlights that. Here's an image that looks a little bit better, but you can see in the background, you just lose a lot of detail back there. And then, uh, and then, and so on. Now, if we go ahead and then switch over to a mode called HD mode, you get a little bit more detail in the images. It does still have limitations to the technology. Um, and we do see some ghosting. There was some ghosting, but then the flash uh, got rid of it and you know made the image look nicer. We'll go ahead and see, now it's gonna flash. You see a little bit more detail in her face as an example than we saw before. Um, and so it's not quite as smooth. It's still fairly smooth, but it's a little bit um, not as smooth. I can't think of the quite phrase to, to put there. Um, and then of course you've got the flashing. So if we go back to the Inkwise again, and we go to speed, then we notice we lose the flashing. Some of the detail in the images goes away. Again, look, look at her face. You see no 
detail there. It's washed out now. But if you scroll, no flashing and everything's quite smooth. So that's basically what it's like uh, to use the browser. Okay, our next stop is going to be YouTube. By the way, we can see a little bit of ghosting here on the screen from the prior page. And I'm just gonna use my swipe gesture and it's gone. So that's another example of what a little bit of ghosting looks like. But let's go ahead and go into the YouTube app here. And I'm gonna pull up my holiday guide, which I just recently released. And the reason, by the way, why I'm using my guide is it allows me to spend a little bit more time on the video without having a copyright issue, uh, which I have experienced before in these types of videos. So that's the purpose there. Let's go ahead and just expand that. So we've got the full screen there. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the drop down bar. Let's see what we're on. So we are currently on speed mode. And that's really the only mode I would recommend. Yes, you've got ghosting. You can see some of the ghosting up here and some of the odd effects on the screen. Um, but it's gonna give you just the best overall but it's still not great. You'll notice here, particularly in the image of the video, uh, you see a lack of definition. Uh, you're gonna see a little bit of jankiness for lack of a better term. Well, let's go ahead and play it and we'll also get a sample of what the speakers sound like. Some devices have front lighting. Now, earlier in the video, I talked about how LCD screens have light that's behind the image and it shoots that light at Okay, so not great, but serviceable. The speakers are decent. They're not anything to write home about. And of course, uh, the images is not you know, particularly good. You would rather watch a YouTube video on a phone, for example, but it can do the job. Now, I think this is the superior mode. Let's take a look at the other mode, however, which in this case is Regal. And what you'll, well, you'll see the effect. Let's go ahead and start playing it. Okay, I think we can stop there because it's pretty obvious. You see just a ton of choppiness in the image. In fact, it's continuing for some reason here um, on on the uh, the top and the bottom. But it's not a good way it's, it, to watch a video. The audio is still fine, of course, because the refresh mode doesn't affect the audio. But the visuals, it's really unacceptable in my mind. The only acceptable way to watch videos is to use the speed refresh setting but even then, it's not the best experience. It's a serviceable experience at best. Okay, next up, we're gonna demonstrate Microsoft Word. And we're actually gonna do a few things at the same time here. If I pull the drop down bar, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the Bluetooth toggle. And I've already uh, connected a couple items, and here is one of them. This is my kind of keyboard and mouse. So I can flip it up like so. And then I've got a little bit of a mouse pad on the side and you can see that I've connected. It's, it remembers this from the last time. Let's actually go ahead and move that mouse cursor around the screen to get a sense of what that's like. Okay, so pretty choppy. And that's probably because we're in a high definition mode. So you can see that right there. Let's go ahead and speed and let's see what that mouse looks like. Okay, so still a little bit choppy, but not nearly as choppy as before. You can see a much smoother motion. Let me go in circles there. And let's go ahead and go over here and launch Word. Here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and just start a blank document, like so. So it's definitely a workable mouse. The keyboard comes up, we'll get rid of that. Okay, so now let us start to type. Now, this is not an easy keyboard to type on, but I think it's pretty clear to see that um, the text really types nicely. There's not much of a lag at all. So very responsive, even though this is not, you know, the Bluetooth keyboard that's connected to the device. This is just a Bluetooth connection, which generally isn't as good if you have, you know, a pinned connection. It's still quite good. And of course, we are using uh, the speed mode. The regal mode isn't quite as good. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Okay, and of course I misspelled mode, but let's go ahead and fix that. Lots of flashing. It's a little bit more delayed as you type. So. You don't wanna go HD in this mode, and you don't need to. The speed mode is perfectly fine. 
So we'll go ahead and do that. And again, of course, with the mouse, um, it's a little bit better in speed mode. Anyway, it's not quite as choppy. Now let me go ahead and put this aside for a second. I'm going to go ahead and use this mouse. So I'm going to turn this on and Bluetooth should recognize this as well. There it is. And this gives me just a little bit more control. Let's see what it's like to highlight. So I'm going to go ahead and try to highlight this section. And there it is. So it's doable. It's not as good as on a computer, right? I wasn't really, couldn't tell I was highlighting until I let go of the cursor. Um, so it's not the best performance, but it's certainly workable. And again, we'll just take a look at that mouse. A little bit choppy, but not nearly as choppy as in the HD mode. And that's what that looks like there. By the way, you notice we've got a little bit of ghosting down here. You can see a band right here. Keep your eye on that. I'll go ahead and refresh the screen to remove it. Just another example of ghosting. Um, and that, and we've now gotten rid of that. But this is basically what it's like. So, so typing in Word or you know Google Docs or what have you is actually a very good experience. And e-ink handles typing really well. So we just kind of saw an example of that. But using a mouse is doable, but it's a little bit of a clunky experience. Um, it's certainly functional, but it's a step back from what you're used to, say, working on a laptop or a computer. And you kind of have to know that if you're going to do this type of you know, productivity, uh, mouse-based stuff is just going to suffer as a result of that. It, it, it can get you there, but with sacrifices. Okay, I hope that was helpful. We got a little more of an in-depth view of how the book's uh, Note Air 5C can perform in things outside of its native reading and writing application. So if you are interested in using the e-ink device as more of an Android tablet, I think you have a better sense of that from this video. One bit of commentary though, particularly for people who might be new to e-ink, is that e-ink really is best around things like reading, you know, reading books. You know, Kindles classically have brought e-ink to the forefront of, of our um, society. And, you know, writing over the last few years and note-taking has been an amazing use for e-ink. And those are cases where I think e-ink is better than what it's replacing. I would rather take notes on an e-ink device than, say, paper. I'd rather read on an e-ink device than, say, a book, for example. But when you start moving to other areas, you know, that is a little bit less true. I would definitely rather watch a YouTube video, for example, on a tablet, like an iPad, or on a computer, or on my phone, than an e-ink device. And some of the other things we talked about today, I would feel the same way about. So I just want to make that as a cautionary note. You know, the Note Air 5C is a great device in terms of working with Google Play apps, and we saw a range of them today. And there are things that you can do. It doesn't always mean that you should. It really just depends on your use case. And just know that if you do go that direction, there are some compromises there. Probably we saw that most pointedly in terms of using a mouse and the device, but there are other aspects as well. If you have any questions about anything covered in this video or any other questions in general, please pop those in the chat and I'll try to respond to those as best I can. This will probably be my last video. I have a pretty packed schedule going to the end of the year in terms of other videos I want to release. So I don't anticipate returning to the Note Air 5C anytime soon. Uh, but again, if you did have a question and uh, if I can help, I'll try to do that. Uh, accordingly. All right. Thank you very much. I hope this was helpful. I'll give you a sense of how the device worked and a little bit better picture of whether this device might be right for you or not. All right. Thank you very much. And I hope you have a great day.